Okay, hello everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Um, we're really excited about this call, um, and we've got two great uh, kind of co-presenters here today. Uh, Kenny is the co-founder of Broad Street, uh, and Bob Frisch, the publisher of Mountain View Publishing, uh, three magazines up in New Hampshire and Vermont. Um, today we'll be talking about how to use the Broad Street ad server to jumpstart digital sales. Um, obviously, that's a very broad topic. Um, and we could cover a lot, but we're going to try to focus in on the things that matter most uh, to publishers. Uh, we'll be covering what, first off, what is an ad server, um, and you know some arguments for why you need one uh, versus just simply like posting an image in your sidebar, for example. Uh, there's some really unique things that Broad Street does uh, that we're going to highlight, uh, and then we're going to let Kenny uh, give us a quick demo uh, to see how it it works, uh, and then finally we'll. We'll talk to Bob about the sales process that he actually used. And at the time that we created this webinar, he was dead about, just to tease it a little bit, he was doing about 2,400 in new digital revenue. Uh, that number has actually gone up um, since we set this up. So we'll talk about how he's doing that and the process that he's following um, and some other things like that. Um, so first off, you know, what is uh, an ad server? Um, you know, at its core, it's simply software and hardware that delivers ads to a website, right? But not every ad server uh, is created equal. Uh, you may be familiar uh, with Google DFP or OpenX. Those are two very common um, platforms uh, that serve ads that are out there that publishers use. Um, you know, Broad Street is an ad server, um, but they do some really unique things and, and that we'll get into. But um, things that you should consider as you're thinking about evaluating ad servers are, you know, you know, how does it manage the placement of ads on your website? Um, it's really important for things like uh, displaying the ads quickly, right? If the ads are really slow to load um, and they're not what we call asynchronous, meaning they kind of load behind the scenes, that's really going to slow your page load time down, and that's really bad. Um, you know, for your website as it affects your search rank in Google and a lot of other things. What kind of reporting do you get um, from your ad server, right? This is obviously, uh, you're in the business of selling um, against your audience, so you need to be able to report on that. Uh, and maybe, depending on the ad, uh, just clicks or views or impressions or you know, a lot of those similar terms um, aren't enough uh, to get your renewal, right? There's other metrics that you can report on. So what, what ability does this ad server give you on the reporting front? Uh, and then, you know, uh, some ad servers go above and beyond that. Some will allow you to manage the billing process uh, and several other things. But those are the types of things um, that you should be considering um, as you're evaluating ad servers. Um, when we were trying to solve this problem uh, for members of the local publisher network, um, we found Broad Street uh, and it kind of immediately fell in love with them and what they were doing. Um, I'll let Kenny kind of chime in and give us a little bit more info, um, you know, as we go along here, but um, they're doing some really unique things just for local publishers, um, and it comes fully integrated uh, with our community content engine, so there's very little setup that has to be done uh, for those that are our, our members. You simply log into your site, click Ad Management, um, everything is kind of taken care of for you behind the scenes. We kick you over to Broad Street. You can do all their setup, and like magic, your ad appears um, in the right places on your site for, for kind of following best practice. Um, so like I said, Broad Street um, does a lot of really unique things, but the one thing I want to focus on right here is something that you know I'm calling specialty ad types. I think Kenny has a slightly um, you know different name for it, but uh, instead of just having kind of your standard banner advertisement where you upload an image and you give, give it a link um, and you just put it in your sidebar, uh, Kenny, Kenny and co over at Broad Street have built these specialty ad types and it gives you like really unique ways to build ads. Um, a lot of them require you know, no design necessary. So for example, uh, on your right side of your screen, you've got the, um, the real estate gallery ad. Uh, and you can go in and through their system, you can add a bunch of photos, you can put the broker's logo, you can put the agent's image, you can put all the details about the house. Um, and it, it basically really just gives you this very paint by numbers um, you know, approach to being able to uh, deliver really valuable ads. 
Uh, so you can see that they have you know no shortage of options. Uh, one of my favorite ones is the uh, the countdown timer. Um, you know, this is a great ad for you know if there's a big event coming up, or if there's a grand opening, or grand reopening, or uh, you know, one one of many other use cases. I guess uh, that's a great way to to kind of start a conversation around getting started with digital. Um, I, I will note at this point that um, just because of, of time, I don't have time to go through all of these. Uh, but if you look uh, in your go to webinar control panel, uh, there's a little handout uh, that's attached that you guys can download. Um, and it's a Broad Street ad formats overview. It, it covers these things uh, in a little bit more detail. Uh, so I definitely recommend that you download that um, if you haven't seen it already uh, and go ahead and browse through it. It gives you, gives you some tips on what you can sell, how to approach the sales process, uh, as well as some pricing around each type of ad. Um, so you may be thinking, you know, why does this matter, right? You know, why do I need these specialty ad formats? Why do I, I need an ad server, right? And it, it all comes down to differentiation. Um, you know, how can you, it's a very competitive uh, atmosphere out there, right, in the sales, uh, sales force. Uh, and how can you put yourself in a position to stand out and close more sales? Well, Broad Street is uniquely uh, kind of equipped to help you with that. Um, it offers you a bunch of different ads that no one else has. Uh, some of them are updatable, meaning that, the advertiser can come in and change it whenever they want. Um, there's real time, what I call real time social ad formats, which we're going to dive into uh, a little bit more in a few minutes. Um, these are things that don't take up existing inventory. Um, and when I say inventory, I mean what are all the ad slots available on your site, right? There's only a limited number of spaces that you can put an ad. Um, but a lot of these ad types have, don't take up a spot. You know, it might be on the right side of your page, it might be in a newsletter. Um, could be anywhere. Uh, the next big thing is is mobile friendly, right? As more and more people are going to mobile devices and viewing content on mobile devices, having mobile friendly ads that don't ruin the experience is super important. Um, and, and Kenny's done a great job uh, of kind of developing ads uh, that aren't uh, intrusive and don't get in the way. I mentioned it earlier, a lot of the ad types have uh, no designer necessary. So when you're talking to smaller mom and pop shops, uh, that are really trying to, you know, kind of save money on the on their advertising expenditure. Uh, you can help them save on the design aspect and still give them something really valuable. Um, and as Kenny's going to get into, uh, they offer deeper analytics, better performance. Uh, when I say performance in this case, I mean uh, both in terms of click-through rates and impressions because of the different ad types, but also in the speed of which the ads are served on your site. It doesn't slow your site down. Um, and, and Quite honestly, a lot of these ad types give you a really good reason to, um, you know, start a conversation uh, either with a new business or restart a conversation with a, an advertiser that maybe used to advertise with you uh, or used to do online and no longer does. You can use this as, hey, we're starting out, um, we're partnering with Broad Street and Locable, um, and we have these all these new cool things uh, that we can do for you that are getting really great results. Can we talk about it a little bit more? So when you look at all of this together, we're really trying to empower you um, to, to stand out from your competition uh, in your conversations. Um, so with that, I'd like to turn um, the call over uh, to Kenny. Uh, I've asked him to do a quick demo, um, you know, share some of his favorite ad types and, and talk a little bit more about reporting. Um, so that you can get an idea of, you know, why Broad Street is different and why, why you should care. Um, so without further ado, Kenny, the floor is yours. All right, cool. Um, so just to make sure, can everyone see my screen? Or does that have to be passed over to me still? All right, here we go. All right, so everyone, this is Kenny from Broad Street. Um, I founded Broad Street. I wanted to give you a quick background on Broad Street, uh, just to kind of tell you, you know, where we come from and, and why we do what we do. Broad Street was launched in 2012, um, kind of a spin-off of a small community publisher named Red Bank Green. And Red Bank Green, um, I was I was really the webmaster of Red Bank Green. I was kind of doing it as as a side thing for a friend who ran Red Bank Green. Um, and meanwhile, I was working at Yahoo on the on their ad tech. And uh, Red Bank Green's issue is that they're basically selling standard banner ads, and they're starting to get increased competition from Patch and all these different, you know, hyperlocal networks 
Um, especially in, in New Jersey where we are, there was a ton of competition from other ad sales people. So at Red Bank Green, we kind of thought about, um, you know, what can Red Bank Green sell to its advertisers to be different? Um, because everyone else is selling standard banner ads, which are really just print ads on the web. Um, that's what banner advertising is right now on the internet. It's really just print ads on the web. So we said, you know, what can we do? Um, the internet is a very dynamic medium. Uh, you know, obviously HTML, JavaScript, and CSS are powerful things. And we can build creatives that impress our ad clients and uh, deliver better branding power and better performance than all of our competition offers. So that's what, that's what you know, where Broad Street's roots are. And uh, over the course of four years, we've really um, worked on maturing this idea and ultimately wrapped it up into what is called Broad Street Express. So I will say be, before I start, my number one uh, goal with Broad Street is to help our customers impress their ad prospects. When you first set up a meeting, you set up a meeting, we want our customers to be able to show up with something in hand, you know, not something abstract and say like, oh, you can have a banner ad on our site, are you interested in buying? We want our customers to be able to show up with something that that ad prospect has never seen before. Uh, so we want you to impress somebody off the bat. We want you to close the sale. And when you do close the sale, that's not the end of it, you know, because advertising has a, uh, a reputation as being, you know, somewhat of a gimmick online. It's like, you know, you kind of wonder, the advertiser wants to see performance in most cases. You know, I, I find there are two big reasons that people will buy an ad, and one is that they're just trying to buy, buy the friendship of the person buying the ad. You know, obviously community publishers have a voice in town, and some people are just looking to, to sponsor the site and let them know that they're friends and hopefully get some good press in the future, but a lot of times when people spend money, especially at the local level, they don't have a lot of money to just throw around and buy political relationships. A lot of times they do actually want performance out of the ad. So step one is impress. Step two is actually deliver on the performance that you promised. Um, that's really hard to do with standard banner ads. So um, at the end of that campaign, we want you to be able to deliver uh, a performance report that shows that that the ad actually performed, all right? So if you impress the prospect, you finally get them to buy. At the end of the campaign, there's no point in just selling someone, selling somebody an ad. It doesn't perform because then you kind of you kind of burned out the prospect. You burned out the relationship. It really has to be something that they're going to keep coming back to. Uh, it's something that stands out from the competition. So that's what Broad Street Express is all about. We don't personally believe that there's any future in selling standard advertising. Um, you would think that there was a future in it uh, with the way national publishers talk about programmatic and ad exchanges and things like that, but the economics of buying and selling ads just do not work out in the publisher's favor right now. If everyone is forced to sell uh, their ad space for standard banner ads, it gives the publisher literally no leverage in the conversation. We want our publishers to be able to use the fact that they have total autonomy over their site to deliver branding power that nobody else can get through Facebook, through Google, through an exchange. So Broad Street Express is about talking to your advertiser and saying that we have something that performs much better, you're going to get better value than you'll ever get through an exchange. So think about Express as delivering value. So to, uh, to actually go into what I'm talking about, you know, I want you to be able to walk into an advertising prospect uh, or an appointment with a prospect and have something to show them immediately. So Let's let's create a sample ad on Broad Street Express right now. This is the interface. It's very close to the interface that you might be using right now for Broad Street. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to, by the way, be posting this on the Broad Street Express sandbox site. So we're going to post something in the sidebar. I'll show you um, what's required. So we're going to create a new advertiser, call it Locable. All right. So then you have a whole list of ad formats. Um, we have the Express exclusive, so some of these are available to not Express customers, but the real powerful ones, or the really powerful ones, are um, right here. So Instant Facebook is a is an extremely popular one, and the reason I like Instant Facebook, I think Ryan said I would talk about some of my ad favorite ad formats. The reason I like Instant Facebook is so it because it's so easy to create. So um, Rook Coffee, actually, let me see if uh, I always. I always demo with Temp That Burrito because it's uh, my favorite burrito shop. Um, this part of New Jersey, which isn't saying much. There aren't a, an amazing number of great burritos in, in New Jersey, and Temp That's pretty good. 
still not the best, but I like to use them for uh, for demo purposes. So let's call this 10th Ave. And so let's just say 10th Ave Rideau, um, you want to bag them as, a, as an advertising client. So you want to create an ad. Typically, you'd have to get a designer to create an ad, but you're not going to do that before you have an appointment and get the OK from the advertiser. But with Broadsheet Express, just create the, uh, you just paste in their Facebook link, click Create Advertisement. It'll take a couple seconds to generate. So you got the 10th Ad Burrito ad. So this is actually pretty cool because I wanted to show you guys this. Um, so this is the ad that it generated. And if there are comments, it'll pull in some comments. Um, it'll give you the like count. But this ad will stay in sync with the advertiser's Facebook page every hour. So you know, basically, as, as much as 10th Ad Burrito wants to post, uh, their latest post will show up here. And you can do certain things, like you can filter it by a certain hashtag, make sure only posts that get in there. Uh, the only posts I get in there are, are have a certain phrase or hashtag, but it pulls in images, and in this case, you can see it actually pulled in video. Um, so that's actually that's pretty cool. Um, and then if I want to run this ad on the site, just come down here, click Quick Campaign. I think I uh, put sidebar number one on the demo site, so click Create Campaign. Go to our sandbox site. You can see that the ad is now present on the site. So I can actually, and you can actually preview this. I didn't have it set up for the um, for this demo, but you can actually have it show up on the site without actually being live. But uh, with a special link, you can you can preview it and send it to your advertiser by email, or just show up to their to their uh, to the appointment, you know, with your iPad or whatever you typically use to demo, and, uh, and show them the ad right on their site. But it took less than two minutes. All you needed was a Facebook link. We do that for Instagram, Twitter. We can do it for RSS feeds. Um, we do it for a lot of different things. But these little social media ads have been gigantic sellers for a lot of our customers. We have a lot of customers with probably you know 20 of these things down the sidebar. And for these, you know, Red Bank Green in this case, they, they mark a premium. I think they, they sell this for something like three or $400 a month. Um, for you know, obviously it's a bigger ad. Uh, they're you know, it, it's naturally going to have a higher click-through rate. I don't know how, if there's a better way for 10th Ave Rito. You know, let's just say they have a, a band playing one night, like maybe they had here actually that looks like footage of the Grateful Dead. But let's just say they had a band playing one night. And um, how else do you bring that energy and the experience, and how do you deliver that through a banner ad? Well, it's like now you can. And uh, that's a pretty powerful thing that that users can, you know, always see the latest right here. Because if you think about it, 10th Burrito, when they post to Facebook, they have 13,000 likes on Facebook. And when they post to Facebook, sometimes they get three, four likes on something. You think about this, 13,000 13, likes on their page, and they only got one like on this post. All right? And I'll tell you that uh, 10th Ed Burrito is, is very popular. They've been in diner, dives in, dive, <laughs> drive-ins and dives. Uh, the band that's playing on Halloween is Dead Bank, which is hugely popular. This is just something that didn't get into Facebook's algorithm, so it's not getting any exposure outside of Facebook or, or inside of Facebook for 10th Ave Burrito. So if you think about it, there's a lot of value to bringing their messaging outside of Facebook as well. So that's just one of the ad types. Red Bank Green, the original site I mentioned, has you know probably, let's see, maybe like 10, 12 of these instant ads, all from various sources that they run on the site, just because they're so easy to set up. Um, you have restaurants, what better way to invoke, you know, food has, it invokes that kind of primal urge, and you can't, you know, you, it's hard for that not to be eye-catching. You know, uh, snap, a picture of food with a filter is probably gonna get some attention. Same thing with real estate. So we have a lot of realtors using some of our different ad formats. This is the Amazing Cube. Um, it, it was really a proof of concept, but it took off. It's been extremely popular with, with advertisers. And I talked about the performance. You know, I talked about the performance saying that you know, a lot of Broad Street's ads um, perform much better than the other ads. So this is, this is just a Cube ad. I want to show you the performance of this ad because it's much higher than uh, than what you would expect from a typical banner ad. So we're going to actually look at the reporting. So this is real reporting. It's not contrived. This is the ad inside Red Bank Green's dashboard. And if I click on advanced reporting, this is a major express feature. Because I talked about how you said you want to deliver uh, on your performance promises. All right? Because most people, they go back to the advertiser and they have a few numbers. They say, 
you know, you got 100 clicks and you got 100,000 views, click through rate, you know, do you want to buy again? And that's not a very compelling pitch. But inside Broadstreet's dashboard, you get information like front click, back click. These are the sides of the cube that they clicked on. A lot of our ad formats, they track different events. So we go beyond the actual click. But for the people who did click, you can actually get this downloadable report here. And Red Bank Green, by the way, has these emailed out to their advertising clients automatically every week. This is a Broadstreet feature in PDF form. And you'll see what the uh, actual report looks like. I think this report is going to cover about 30 days, but here's the cube ad. So you can see the click-through rate is 0.45%. There were a lot of ads in that sidebar, so you would expect a lower click rate, but instead it still outperformed the standard internet click-through rate by seven or eight times, between seven, probably seven and a half times. So it's getting, it's getting huge traffic, even though it's, as a community publisher, Red Bank Green relies on a lot of advertisers, a lot of advertisements to survive. And it's still getting a huge click-through rate. But now, when you go back, think about this. When you go back to your advertiser and you have click numbers, all right, a lot of times they're so mysterious, they don't know where this click, you could have made them up before the appointment. But with Broadstreet Express, we actually break down the clicks by town. You can see, you can prove to your advertiser, you say, okay, you got this many clicks, and they're all from towns in the surrounding area. We have some in Newark and New York, which are you know, probably about 30 miles away. But uh, that's because a lot of people work in Newark and New York, and they still read Red Bank Green. Middletown, Fairhaven, Rumson, Long Ranch, Eatontown, these are all surrounding towns. And then we actually give you the date of the click, where it came from, the postal code, and the ISP, which is probably the most humanized version of click reporting I've ever seen any ad server offer anywhere. It all gets wrapped up into a PDF and sent to the advertiser. So let me see if I can uh, yeah, just... Before you get out of that... Um... Kenny, I, I wanted to point out one other thing, which I think is pretty cool. And um, in, in this main section here, you actually report on hovers, um, which are something most you know servers can't report on, or at least don't report on. Um, and, and that's really cool because now, now you have this idea of all right, you had so many impressions and you had so many clicks, but how many people saw it, right? Um, and you know, hover is one indicator of uh, you know, how many people engage with the ad that didn't click. Uh, so that, that's a very powerful metric um, that I just wanted to point out for everybody. Right, and, and along with that, we, still, we do custom metrics for our real estate gallery, for example. Um, we'll track any engagement with the ad for people that went through the different slides. Um, and if you have a YouTube ad, so we have an ad which is really just a YouTube video which performs extremely well, the click-through rate is closer to 1%, probably because it looks like a, a YouTube ad, but we'll track did the user get through 25% of the video? Did they even start it? Did they get through 50, 75, et cetera? So we do track into, um, custom metrics per ad type. I know we don't have a, a lot more time for a demo, but I wanted to show the two most popular, not necessarily my favorite, ad, the, the Facebook ad is definitely one of my favorites, but the, um, the Cube ad and the Facebook ad are by far the best selling. Another big seller is something that um, I know uh, a few people at Local Bolt have been big fans of, and um, this is the ExpressMC sidebar. So this is actually um, a sidebar that docks the side of your site, and you can put in as many, in the same manner as the Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter ads, you can put in these little slots for all of your advertisers, and your advertisers' posts will show up reverse chronologically. So if you got a hundred advertisers in there, there will always be a hundred posts in there. But uh, the advertisers who post the most often uh, will generally float to the top. So it encourages them to post, and also it becomes a community news feed. So what's nice about this is that it's mobile friendly. Um, let me see if I can put this in a mobile mode very quickly for you right now. We do have a screenshot of it uh, coming up as well, so um, we can get there if it doesn't uh, refresh here. Got it. So um, uh, maybe they. Uh, where am I? Doing? Here. Well, we, we we have a, a screenshot. Um, there it is. Oh, it was there for a second. Right, um, right. Coming up on the next slide, so we'll get there. Um, all right, so. Your favorite ad was the Facebook social post, and the best performing ad was the Cube ad, and which other one? 
Too bad. Um, I would say they were my favorite because they were the best selling. And then there's one more that I didn't get to. It's called the Sponsored okay. Content Tracker. It's actually. Yeah, an I really like this one. Yeah, and it's a it's an invisible ad that tracks the performance of sponsored content. So this is what it looks like. But then inside the dashboard, this was uh, we'll see if there are still stats for it. Um, you can see how many complete reads the post got, how many links within the post were clicked, text selection, and all of that gets compiled into the same report. So those are my top three: Facebook, Cube, and sponsor content, just because they sell so well. Um, but we have a lot of other formats that that cover different use cases. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. I I, I hope everyone found that as exciting as I did. I think there's really a um, kind of major opportunity here uh, to take your banner ad game to the next level. And those of you who have worked with, with local in the past, uh, you know, we go, you know, we're, we're proponents of going beyond banner ads and, and making sure campaigns are multi-channel, uh, but this is definitely a way to stand out um, and, and get some quick wins, uh, which is going to be the, the focus uh, of the next section here. Um, I should have mentioned this from the beginning before we move on, um, that um, if you have any questions as we're going, either for me, for Kenny, uh, for our next speaker, Bob, uh, feel free to put them in the chat pane. We'll have plenty of time for Q&A at the end. Uh, so if there's anything that you, you have questions about Broad Street or the different ad types or any of that, feel free to type away uh, and we'll come back to them. Um, so our next um, speaker uh, is Bob Frisch. I introduced him at the beginning. Um, yes, uh, for those of you who are keen and know me, that is my dad, uh, so full disclosure. Um, but he is also a, a publisher uh, in, a, in his day-to-day -day life uh, back in New Hampshire. And I asked him to join us because he's one of the, the first publishers that are part of the network uh, that have started to kind of embrace these specialty ad types. Uh, and when he first started looking at Broad Street, um, you know, he wanted to focus on the what we call the, the MC Beats Mixer, which is the last ad that Kenny talked about. Uh, and his goal... Uh, was to get 20 advertisers at 240 bucks a year, you know, prepay for the year. Uh, that equates out to $20 a month. Um, so he set out um, to do that, and he started by sending 40 emails. Um, uh, so first off, Bob, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, um, I wanted to start out by asking you, you know, first off, you know, how long have you been working on on this kind of sales process, uh, you know, kind of start to where you are now? I would say about two weeks, two and a half right, weeks. So you put it two and a half weeks of time, and that was, you know, that includes like waiting for responses and all that, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, you sent 40 emails. Can you give us an idea of, you know, who you emailed first? You know, were they cold leads? Were they warm leads? Can you kind of break down your target prospect, um, okay. you know, maybe by industry or something like that? They were all present clients, 99% uh, of them. We did a little research in advance to see who was active on their business Facebook page, which was a big thing. Uh, many were already my clients. There were a few that weren't. And I sent out an email to more than 40, about 40 prospective clients. I got about uh, six in the first two days said great count us in the price point was perfect they are very active on facebook they love the concept and then i picked up another nine since then in the last week and a half uh, the breakdown so i have 15 sponsors with a goal of 20 which would be forty eight hundred dollars for the year it would be fantastic new revenue i have seven re <coughs> restaurants slash hotels that have restaurants a realtor an event center an arts venue and five retail, but it's a big winner for restaurants who post all the time on specials and, and music, entertainment, all that kind of thing. Great, and so you, you had six quick yeses, and then obviously you've had another nine, um, you know, say yes so far. You know, for those nine, how many kind of back and forth did you have, either over email or on phone, in order to get them from a maybe to a, a yes? I'd say on the average of three emails to get their attention okay. and to remind them and then they were thinking about it and then they said yes. Awesome. All right. So, uh, you know, I, I asked him to share the, these stats with you because I think there's a few things that, that 
stick out. First of all, 99% of the people that he emailed were existing customers, um, and he got six yeses almost immediately, right? So that that's great. And then the rest is, you know, if you get a 50% response rate on anything and a 37% close rate on anything, um, you know, that, that is fantastic. And we're going to dive into... Um, you know, why it worked and what the pitch is on the next slide. Uh, but how many of you, I mean, just, you know, virtual show of hands here, you can kind of do it in, on your own here. How many of you would like another 3,600 in, in new revenue um, just from this basically one placement? Um, you know, it's a great way to kind of jumpstart the sales process. That's the name of, of the webinar today. Um, and, and I will point out, this is a work in progress. I said at the beginning, you know, when we, um, when we announced the webinar, he had, he was up to 2,400. Now he's at 36, and he's shooting for just under five grand. Um, and you know, when you, when you compare that to the cost of Broad Street, uh, it's got an incredibly high uh, return on investment. Um, and we haven't even talked about utilizing any of the other ad formats. So I highly recommend you kind of following um, you know following this process as we go through. Uh, get your, your your first advertisement, cover your costs, uh, and then you can move on to the to the more premium uh, Broad Street features. Um, so many of you might be asking, well, what the hell did he say in the email to get people to say yes immediately? Right now, obviously, he has some relationship uh, with these people, which is a tremendous advantage. Um, but that said, uh, here is the actual email uh, that he used. In his first sentence, uh, he kind of complimented them. He applied to their ego. Hey, we know you're active on your business Facebook page. All right, so he's setting the table. Uh, he does a quick introduction. He briefly mentions, you know, how many page views a month. Um, and, and, and just to be clear here, this is, you know, I have this conversation a lot with publishers, right? And there, there's very, we work with publishers of varying different sizes. Um, he is in a smaller market, 4,000 page views. Uh, you know, you might be thinking isn't great, uh, but it's a good, uh, solid number for this market. If you have higher page views, maybe you charge a little bit more. If you have lower page views, you charge a little bit less. Um, the second paragraph basically introduces how it works, right? Broad Street shoots your Facebook page and posts every hour, uh, puts that post on every page of our site on the right-hand side. Um, you know, he kind of reiterates that it, it updates hourly. Uh, he will send this email. The cost is 20. Can we count you in? The total cost for the year is 240. Um, that's it. There's no magic here. You know, we obviously didn't, you know, he wasn't inflating his numbers. He just said, here it is, right? 4,000 page views, 20 bucks a month. Uh, and he attached um, what I call, what we call a leave behind sales flyer, something that outlines, you know, the value proposition um, uh, of what they're getting, something that people can look over and see what it looks like. Um, you can see that on the right hand side of the screen. Uh, this is something for member uh, that we provide to all members. Um, uh, you know, we're, we're introducing a brand new sales kit. Um, probably by the end of the week, I would say 90% of it is available to you now, uh, including, uh, this document. The one that I mentioned is attached to the, to your, to your console. If you want to download it, uh, page four can be used as the lead behind sales flyer. Uh, so if you go to have a conversation and they're not saying yes right away, you can leave this with them or you can send it an email um, as Bob did. So with that, I had a couple more questions um, for you, Bob. Uh, the big thing I want to know is when you sent this email, um, what kind of questions did you get in response for those that were, you know, looking for more information? Um, I had three, pretty much three questions that came up. Um, they wanted to know how long the, their present post would stay up there. Uh, in other words, uh, say they only did it once a week. They want to know did that stay up until they repost the next time. And I, these questions, I turned to Locable for help, and I got the answers quickly, and I got back to them. And so you can answer that one, I guess. Yeah, we'll, we'll answer the three questions. What were the okay. uh, What were the other two? Um, they want to know if there's a rollover link to either their faith, Facebook page or website. If somebody clicked on it, would it go somewhere? And then they want to know if there's any way to track it and would I be able to provide a report when asked? Yeah. All right. So uh, I think those are three very good questions and I want to address them because you may see them uh, as well. 
Um, the first one is really like, you know, where does my ad show and how frequently, right? And I think Kenny addressed this earlier, but I'll, I'll recap. Basically, how it works is that if you have 20 advertisers, there is going to be a feed of 20 posts um, on, in, you know, on the right side of your site. And it's always going to show the latest Facebook posts from each of your advertisers' pages. The only thing that really changes is the order. You know, the more recent stuff is going to naturally float to the top. Um, and the stuff that's a little bit more stale is going to flow to the bottom. This is fairly consistent with how a Facebook feed would work. But the really cool thing is this is kind of set up like a Facebook feed on your site. So just because you're not at the top doesn't mean people aren't going to scroll, uh, scroll through it. Um, to answer the link question, uh, the default is to link to the business's Facebook page to the post um, that is highlighted. But you can actually override that. Uh, with any link that you want. So if you wanted it to link to the website or to a landing page or to any of those things, that's possible. Um, and Kenny, uh, if, if you're still there, perhaps you could answer the third question about what kind of reporting is available uh, in um, you know, the, the Beats MC ads. Right, so it's typically the same um, sort of reporting. You get views and you get clicks, but one more thing is that we do uh, do true views. So uh, we track an extra metric which guarantees that the uh, ad was actually within a user's view. So if it loads and the user you know doesn't see it because it's it's at the bottom, um, it will it will track a view once that ad does come into view, and you know if they're on mobile and they scroll through, those are all tracking true views, and um, and it, it all gets compiled into the same type of report that um, I demoed before. How often right. could that happen? Uh, what was the question? How often could we get a report if a particular client system? I have a car dealer who's thinking about it, and they're, you know they're in a different breed, and he asked me that question, but. Suppose he wants a report once a month. Are we able to do that? Yeah, you can actually, if it is once a month, then you can just set it up automatically. And um, in that case, you go in, you edit the advertiser's account, and uh, there's just a checkbox that says send them reports on their advertisements monthly. So they'll, they'll get a full report of all of their active ads uh, included in that. Okay. Um, so the, the, the big thing that I want you to take away uh, from this email pitch uh, is simply that it's, it's not a very technical sale, right? It outlines the value, um, but it works because it's solving a pain point for your advertisers, right? As time has gone on, it's been become increasingly more difficult to increase your Facebook reach. Um, in fact, it is going down uh, fairly regularly um, as you go through things. So, you know, like Kenny said earlier, you might have 10,000 fans on your page, but you only get two likes, right? That's a really, um, you know, tough <laughs> conversion metric. Um, and that's, you know, you know, you can't do anything about that. That's Facebook for you. But what you can do is through this ad, help them get more out of what they're already doing. Um, it works because it's a simple pitch with a yes or no answer. Um, it's an incredibly affordable price point, so it's a great place to start, right? If they have a, a bigger budget um, or you're doing, you know, p perhaps one of the Facebook post ad, which is just them, the ones that Kenny looked at earlier, um, you know, that's a higher price point. But here it's affordable, but it's still tremendously valuable. And I think the one thing I, I really want you to understand is that it, it really came down to the number of emails you sent at the beginning, right? Even with a 50% conversion, um, you're still going to send 40 emails. So you got to go out here. You, know, you could probably, you know, template out a quick email, copy the one we, we just we just had there, send it to you know 40 or 50 people within half an hour, um, and you've started your prospecting. Right? This can be a, a very time efficient um, process. So with that, um, I hope you you kind of see that you know Broad Street can be a really powerful tool both in delivering your ads. Um, but also uh, in you know, working on your pitch and improving your pitch. Uh, those of you that are existing members of the Local Publisher Network, uh, we had, we, you probably saw the announcement recently that there were some changes coming in. And I just wanted to take a quick second to, to outline uh, what those are. Um, your membership uh, you know, currently 
includes what we call standard ad types. That's your, you know, your traditional banner ad where you upload an image and a link and you put it in your sidebar or third party embed codes, whether you're using something like Google Ads or, or you know, something that someone sends you. Those will always continue to be included in the standard membership. Um, what's changing is that um, you know, before the changes that are being made, all the premium ad types, the specialty ad types, the things we've been talking about today, you would pay basically a la carte. It would be 12 bucks a month for the time you're using it. Um, for various reasons, and if Kenny, you want to jump in here and explain them, uh, you're more than welcome to. But for various reasons, Broad Street is updating their pricing model. So now that everything, all the premium ad types are going to be included with no additional fees at one set monthly price. Um, this, I think, you know, my words, not Kenny's, but uh, was done mostly to make sure that you get the most value out of Broad Street. It's been a process that they've gone through over several months in, in learning how people, uh, publishers, use the different ad types. Um, and, and we feel that this is the best way uh, to kind of give you everything you need to be successful online. Uh, was there anything that you wanted to add, Kenny? Uh, right, yeah, so the um, the switch over, what, there were a lot of different reasons behind it. One is that we wanted to be able to guarantee really good support, right? So we had some customers on our platform um, who, you know, maybe were using the bare minimum, um, were obviously had, you know, extremely, extremely high support needs, so we needed to cover that cost in one way, and part of the one way of doing that, and this is like the most candid uh, reasoning I can possibly give, but... Um, Basically, we decided that we'd do that with the a la carte pricing uh, with our special ad types, but then the issue there is that we had a lot of publishers who were reluctant to use them because they didn't want to create them you know, before they had actually sold them. Um, they felt they were being nickel and dimed, and we said, you know, maybe the best solution is to really wrap up Broad Street into one premium product where we build everything, all the, all the support, all of our best products. We just build it into Broad Street Express, call it a day, and, um, and that's... You know, and, and ultimately, um, that's why I think is, is the best decision that's worked out really well um, for us because our customers have been extremely happy and, and um, now they're starting to use these ad types and, and sell these ad types that before they just didn't use because, you know, it was a la carte and it's kind of mysterious. So, so that, that, that's, like I said, the most candid um, explanation of the new pricing as possible is that we can build in all of our best stuff and not have to worry about the different issues that kind of arose when we did, uh, you know, a la carte. Yeah. And, and I will say, I, I think I'm really excited about uh, the change as well. I think this will be a, a really good value add for, for members of our network. Um, so just to, to recap, um, if you're just using the standard banner ad types that have always been included with your membership, nothing is changing. Um, however, if you want to use premium ad types or to continue to use premium ad types, um, definitely reach out to us to have that conversation. Um, this change is becoming official uh, at the end of the month, um, so time is short. Um, this is kind of the I guess the last webinar in the series uh, to kind of introduce Broad Street um, and, and get into some of the bigger details. Uh, and Kenny has been uh, super generous in working with us, and this is a very, very limited time special offer. Uh, but for those that are on the call or those existing members of the local book publisher network, um, you will be able to get all of the Broad Street stuff that we talked about um, for 100 uh, more per month on top of your existing membership. Um, that price is going away very quickly um, and it is, is a, a steal, uh, quite frankly. So uh, if you're interested at all in having uh, that conversation, please reach out to me. Um, you can reply to the webinar email and it will get to me. You can give me a call. You can use the Help Center uh, for existing members um, and we can have that conversation. Um, to, to kind of wrap things up before we, we jump into, um, you know, Q&A for the last about 15 minutes here. Um, our relationship with uh, Broad Street has kind of grown over the last two years, um, and we're very well aligned. Um, you know, the things that we talk about with the local publisher network are um, mimicked very closely in Broad Street. So it's a very close partnership, one that we're very excited about and the future holds uh, a lot of great things on both sides. So just want to say thank you, Kenny, for taking the time. Um, Bob, thank you for joining us and sharing your experience. Um, if there are any other questions, uh, now would be the time to post them 
you know, in the chat pane. Um, I'm just going to try to kind of go through these as we go. So uh, we had a question from Mark, um, and I believe this is probably why we were talking about Red Bank Green. Uh, Mark, if I'm wrong about that, uh, let me know. Uh, but question for Kenny. Do you know what type of traffic does that website get? Uh, Red Bank Green, I think, is probably about 250K page views a month. Yeah, so it's a very it's a very different animal. Uh, they're in a much more populated area than the average um, you know publisher that we're working with here uh, with the local publisher network. Uh, but that doesn't mean that this stuff doesn't work, right? You just have to adjust your prices accordingly. Um, and if you want to have that conversation, or if anyone wants to have that conversation about pricing, uh, that is definitely a, a something we do uh, with all our members. Right. And one thing. Um, one thing I want to note is that um, Broad Street, I, I mean, uh, Red Bank Green and a lot of publishers, you know, they very rarely sell, you know, in CPM. Um, it's really, you sell on a value basis. So, you know, even if you're a lower traffic publisher, we do have some publishers who get something more like 20K page views a month. And, um, or, you know, maybe they're, they're at a few thousand. And it's really just about the kind of value you're delivering. Because if you kind of stick to that CPM sales model, what you're doing is you're saying, okay, I'm going to sell ads at a rate that the people who are just selling basic banner ads are selling. And it's not fair to you because you're delivering so much more branding power and so much more value. So we always encourage our publishers to like, you know, think outside of that. Think about like, okay, what's reasonable? Most, most local advertisers have a couple hundred bucks to spend, um, hopefully. And, uh, you know, how can you deliver something that will get them to agree to, you know, a six or 12 month contract? So, you know, when it comes to pricing, I'm all about just go for what works. You know, don't worry about the the level of traffic. Worry about what you're actually trying to sell your your client. Yeah, I, I think that's that's great advice and something we talk about a lot. Um, you know, there are there are metrics you can use to kind of find a baseline, but then it really comes down to you know what kind of value you're pr producing for your advertisers. Right. Um, and so, go ahead. I was going to say one thing. I, I give a talk at a conference um, a couple weeks ago, and one thing I said is that the number one thing anybody buying something is looking for, like that, that is a baseline, and anybody who spends money understands this, is that you just don't want to get ripped off. That's it. You want your money to go and, and perform for you, and if you're delivering something that may not get as many views as Google or Facebook will give them, but you're delivering something that actually got someone to, you know, whether click on the ad or follow up with the ad and, you know, go and grab that lunch special that showed up in the ad, um, you know, that was posted every day at noon. Uh, that's that's a powerful thing, and, and you are delivering so much more value than any other, you know, any other platform that's trying to undercut your pricing. Um, so it was just more on the value, but I just wanted to make note of that. Yeah, that's, that's a great point. Uh, all right, so a few more questions rolling in here. We'll see if we can get to all of them. We've got plenty of time left. A uh, couple questions from Lisa. One was, I missed it if you said it, but are all these instant Facebook ads? So I think you were asking Bob uh, why he was talking about the the, the 20 advertisers that he, he's shooting for. Um, and the way the, the – it's called a MC – Kenny, what is it? A MC – Beats Mixer, right? That's the ad uh, in Broad Street. That's what it's called for the one on the right side. Right. Um, right. So what it is is it's taking kind of individual uh, Facebook ads or Twitter ads or whatever and putting them into the feed on the right-hand side. Uh, so it's really a combination of the two. Um, you know, it's less, um, you know, specialized, right, because it, you're sharing the space with other advertisers, and that's why we're able to say, hey, that this is a nice low price point option. Um, but they're 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 different things, right? Right. The Facebook, the instant Facebook ad would be a more traditional ad that would show up in the sidebar of your site. It would only be, you know, that one advertiser with their latest Facebook post, as an example. Whereas in the one that Bob is selling, it is, uh, you know, multiple uh, advertisers in one kind of section, uh, if that makes sense. Um, and then a follow-up question uh, from Lisa, please clarify. Does the Facebook post feed on the sidebar override the current sidebars? Secondly, is there a maximum number of instant Facebook advertisers the page will support? Um, so for the first question, um, if you're using the mixer, the one that shows up on the right-hand side, the one that uh, Bob was talking about, 
it does not override the current sidebars, that it is in addition to um, the current sidebars. Uh, is there a maximum number of instant Facebook advertisers the page will support? Uh, Kenny, I would imagine the answer to that is no, but is there a practical limit? Um, not really. Um, the way the ads load, uh, especially in the MC sidebar, um, they actually all get loaded on the page at the exact same time, so it's not like if you have 100 ads in there, you're getting 100 different requests in the background. It all gets loaded at once, so I would say the only real limit, the only real practical limit is the number of people that you've sold the ad to, um, so you, you, know, you can pretty much sell as many as you want, and by the way, I like... I'm a big fan of also adding community organizations, whether it's your local police, you know, local elementary school, um, because you do want it to be a community news feed, um, you know, and not just in a sidebar of ads. It's got to be informational too. So it's got to be a place that users actually look and don't view it as something threatening. They view it as something more like, okay, this is what's going on in town. Yeah, that, that's a great point and it's something that, um, you know, Bob and I have been discussing about, you know, how many, you know, non-advertisers do we include in there and who should they be? Um, and another one that came to mind, especially if you have a good relationship, was the, the Chamber of Commerce might be a good one because uh, they share a lot of local stuff that's going on. Uh, I really like the idea of the police, uh, you know, if the police have a Facebook page or a feed or something, that's another good one to throw in there. Right. Um, kind of urgent news. And especially, uh, you know, chamber chamber of commerce. I mean, that could, you know, essentially be a freebie, and, and maybe should be, um, you know, because obviously, obviously, your whole game is sales, and you know, getting, you know, community community public. I mean, community advertisers are kind of driving your business. So, uh, you know, using it to hand out some freebies isn't such a bad idea too, to uh, kind of get some favor. Yeah, totally agree with that statement. Um, all right, so the next question is from Jim. What is the impact of ad blockers in this environment? Uh, Kenny, that, that one's all you. That, that's your area of expertise, I think. Right. So Broadstreet, actually, we have um, a feature called ad blocker invisibility. And that's you know because I had a short demo, I didn't really get too, much, too far into it. Um, but basically, what we can do, and it requires a little bit of setup on both the publisher side and the Broadstreet side. But, um, and actually, this is something we could probably do for local globally. Um, is set up a custom white label domain that all of white lo uh, locable serves off of that would actually prevent ad blockers from blocking our ad types. Um, ad blockers are not very sophisticated pieces of software. They rely on a, a, a certain set of rules or rule categories to block ads and you can avoid those rules and, and have your ads appear and you can do it in such a way that ad blocker can't really come around and, and you know, add new rules to prevent your ads because if you do it in the right way, you can make it so that ad blocker would be creating, you know, false positives around the web if they tried to block our ads. So we have a few publishers. Um, the head of Lion Publishers, uh, Dylan Smith, he uses it at Tucson Sentinel. Um, we have about 10 other publishers using our ad blocker and visibility. So that's something that we could actually implement for local globally, you know, just prevent ad blockers from blocking your ads uh, as a whole. And, and I will I will add from local standpoint, we 100% plan on doing that as part of the, the transition from kind of the, their existing solution to the express solution that you know, we've been talking about. So uh, I don't know the exact timing of, the, uh, of that setup, but hopefully it'll be in the next week or two. Um, you just got to find a time to, to sit down and, and make, the, make the changes, which Kenny has said aren't that difficult. So um, that is something that we'll be addressing internally, so you don't have to worry about that particular aspect of it. Uh, we want to make that available to everyone uh, where we can. Um, anything else you wanted to add to that particular item, um, Kenny? No, no, no. That's uh, the, and I did okay. want to say that the only reason that we don't do it by default is because it requires a little bit of setup on the publisher's end. Um, but yeah. local will we'll be handling that, so it'll be um, you know. Yeah. Our, our, our publishers that are members won't have to deal with the configuration necessary to do it. We're going to be be handling that internally for you. Right. Right. Uh, all right, so next question, um, Pamela, so to be clear, it would be $2.99 a month for premium membership with a special offer. Um, to be crystal clear, whatever you're paying, add $100, and that's what you'll be paying. Um, this is, you know, in the example here, our standard membership starts at $199, and as everyone knows, that's based on circulation or market population for online-only publications. Uh, so everyone um, pays a slightly different price depending on that. So wherever you are currently, 
plus $100, you get all the Broad Street stuff. And I think that what's really important here is, is the reason I asked Bob to speak and, and the reason I focused uh, on this, you know, kind of right side feed ad is because I wanted to give you a really quick and easy way um, to go out and make some money. And if you use the same goals that Bob did, 20 advertisers at 240 a year, and you really go out and you nail that, uh, not only are you covering the additional costs, uh, but you're actually putting some money in your pocket, and that is that is the goal of that particular ad type. Now, you may find, depending on your market, that maybe the instant Facebook ads are a quicker path to that, um, or you know maybe it's a cube ad or any of the other different ad types. Uh, but we wanted to outline one particular process uh, and kind of go through the case study, if you will, of of how it went down. Um, so, you know, I, I I hope that answers that question. Um, Let's see. Uh, next question from Wendy. For the businesses that are part of the Facebook feed advertising option, do paid sponsored Facebook ads show up as well? Any concerns with conflicts on different Facebook policies? Um, you, you might have to clarify that one again. I assume that you mean like boosted ads um, in the news feed on Facebook. Kenny, is there any conflict of, of paid advertising on Facebook with the feed? Um, do you see it any differently, or is that a non-issue? Right. So we just we just pull the latest post, and whether that post is boosted or not, we're kind of oblivious to it. We just pull in the content or the latest content from that yeah. feed. Yeah. So I, I imagine, uh, Wendy, that if you're an advanced Facebook advertiser, uh, and you're kind of in Facebook's ads management and you're running an ad that doesn't necessarily appear in the feed, then that would be an issue. Um, but I'm guessing that it is a non, uh, not a problem. Um, you know, as long as it's in the feed, it will show up. As long as it's in the news feed on Facebook uh, as a post, it will show up in the feed on your website through Broad Street. Um, another question from Mark. How many customers are using the content analytics. Um, I assume you mean globally with Broad Street. Do you have a sense of that, Kenny? Um, so I would say, I mean, it's not a number I track, but it's a number I would expect to be close to 100%. Um, I do have a few customers who tell me that um, you know maybe their uh, their advertisers don't really want the numbers. They don't care. About, I've never asked for them. Um, but it's something that I've been encouraging our customers to use because almost every single one of my customers has at least one customer, one advertising client who is savvy, who does want the numbers. And um, it's easy enough to set up the automatic report because, I mean, it's something that they haven't seen before. No one else is giving them that kind of report. So uh, I, I, do have, I do have a lot of customers um, that are using it. Like I said, if it's not it's not 100%, I would like to think it's it's – getting close and I would like to say that at the end of, you know, um, or within a few months of a customer signing up with Express, I would like every single publisher to be to be using the reporting. So um, if you really if you wanted a hard, if you wanted a hard number on it, I could get it, but it's not something I have on the top of my head. And I'll just add, I mean, we talk about kind of native advertising or sponsored content a lot in our strategy. Uh, this is a great way to get more detailed reporting and automate the reporting process. Um, you know, so it's a really good fit. Again, another really good fit uh, between the community content engine and Broad Street. Um, oh, you know what? Um, I think I understood that question a little bit better now. Um, I think it was referring specifically to the sponsor content tracker. And, um, correct. Yeah. I, th I thought it was just analytics as a whole. Um, I don't. Again, I don't have a, a hard number, but. There are some publishers that rely on it uh, very heavily, one of them being Potomac Local, who's a, about half of their sales strategy is sponsored content. Sponsored content is huge for a lot of our customers. So um, I would say using the sponsored content tracker is probably closer to 20%. Um, a lot of them don't do sponsored content yet. Got it. Good. That's good to know. Um, all right. So with that, I don't see, I think we've answered all the questions that have come in. Uh, if there are any further questions, now's the time to, to post them. Um, you know, if anyone has any, you know, specific implementation questions, um, I am here to, to answer any questions. Please feel free to reach out. You can reach me at ryan at locable.com. Um, and otherwise, uh, Kenny uh, and Bob, thank you again so much for, for taking the time out of your day and, and sharing your you know, uh, I guess in, in Kenny's case, your awesome product, and in Bob's case, uh, you know, your your financials and your your process. Um, I hope everyone found that helpful. Um, 
And with that, I think we are done for today. Um, I uh, thank you for thank you for joining us. Thank you. Absolutely. Nice having me. All right. Have a good one, everyone.